G'day, my name is Andrew Jobling, and I'm pretty happy to be here with Prosper on the online prosperity show. And um, I'm going to be talking to Prosper today about not only how do you become a successful published author, but how you then take a book and leverage it and turn it into some of the most amazing experiences and opportunities and abilities to diversify that you'll ever possibly imagine. So hang around, watch this show with Prosper and I, and um, let's have some fun. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've got the accidental author himself, Andrew. Andrew, how are you doing, my man? I'm good, Prosper. How are you, mate? Fantastic. Your uh, enthusiasm is very infectious. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you so much for making time uh, for us on the show today. It's not by any accident. And viewers, if you're watching this show today, you would understand that every single day, we're bringing to you experts in their own uh, realm, people that are, um, you know, going out there, out of their way to help you be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And as you would uh, listen to this show today, we're going to unpack how you too can actually write a book so you can establish your own authority within your niche. Now, Andrew here has since written eight books in his career and has been taking um, you know, the world by storm. And he now teaches people how they too can become successful published authors and create the same results that he has managed uh, to create. So obviously I've tracked him out in his books, his workshops, his online programs. He also has videos where he mentors people and he's helped thousands of people. And you too could be one of those people that is going to help to, um, you know, write out your own book so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, Andrew, tell me a little bit about yourself and how this all got started. Okay. Um, well, you may need, to, I don't know how much time you've got Prosper and grab yourself a box of tissues because, you know, it's a bit of a sad story. No, no, it's actually, um, thank you for, again, thanks for having me. Um, the fact that I'm a published author now is one of those, one of those, unique rare things that happens then you look back i don't know if anyone listened to this relates to this you look back and go how did i get here how did this happen because i mean my whole life has been um i've been very i'm very spontaneous i'm not an overthinker i just tend to go with the flow and um at a young age i made a decision that i wanted to be famous <clears throat> i don't know why i thought i wanted to be famous but i did and i decided um that i was going to do it through sport and i played uh uh, end up playing at St Kilda. So those people that are Australian or Melbourne based and follow the AFL, I, at the age of 16, um, this sooky little skinny, less than talented kid found his way at uh, a professional club and I played there for seven years. And uh, that I guess that was a start for me of starting to believe more in myself that, you know, things don't have to necessarily... You don't have to be that talented necessarily. You don't have to. You don't necessarily have to be that qualified. You just need to want something badly enough to to go to work and get it done. And so I'm pretty proud of the fact that I played uh, seven years of professional sport. Then um, you know I, I guess I rolled into a fitness industry career and I worked as a personal trainer for 15 years. Um, that was tough work and uh, and decided at some point I was very inspired about nutrition. So I, I thought I've got this message I want to try and get out to the world and, and at that point I didn't know how I was going to do it. So my first thought was to buy a cafe. Um, so in the year 2000 I decided to buy a cafe and combine that with a full-time personal training career. So for the next two years I worked seven days a week, 15 hours a day and went horribly broke. In fact, I went beyond broke. I was in about $100,000 debt. So... I'm telling all this because there I was one day and I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the back office of my cafe praying for a miracle, hoping that money would have magically appear into my bank account. And, uh, and, and I just thought there's got to be a way for me to get a message out to the world. So I'm sitting there just going, how am I going to do it? All of a sudden, and I don't know where it came from, this voice came into my head and it said, write a book. And I laughed. I mean, because, I, you know, I never read, I was never a reader. I was, you know, writing was not something I'd ever thought about doing. Um, at the time, I was working seven days a week, 15 hours a day. I'm a footballer. All, all logic pointed in every other direction except writing. But, but that was, that's just me. I, make, I thought I could see what I guess what I could see was if I can write a book, 
I can get a message out beyond myself. That was, I think, probably the most important thing. The second thing that was pretty important to me at the time was being able to diversify my income. I thought, well, if I can write a book, I can start creating another stream of income which might help me get out of this crazy, crazy life that I'm living and, and give me some um, financial options. So somehow uh, I, I found small pockets of time and two years later I had written my first book and it was published and it was called Eat Chocolate, Drink Alcohol and Be Lean and Healthy that uh, went on to become a bestseller. And that, do you know what, that, that then totally transformed my life. Um, from that point, oh, I thought this is what I want to do. I want to be an author. And I guess the reason is because not only did it, it was just an amazing feeling to know that I could do that, was that and, and also to, then to start getting feedback and emails and letters from people that read the book and how much it impacted them and changed their lives and helped them. And I thought, this is what I want to do. But more than that, and there's way more than that, and now what I teach people is it's, it's really not about the book. It's what that book actually represents, what it will do, the doors will open. Since then, since that time, you know, I've been able to, you know, I make a great income as a speaker. I'm now a mentor. I've got online programs. I make money from books. Um, you know, I've, I've had numerous opportunities, um, numerous exposure. I'm now someone, I guess, who's seen with, with credibility, you know, because I've written a book. And it's, you know, within a couple of years of that first book, I was retired from personal training and now I'm a full-time author and hang around home, you know, doing stuff like this and not certainly not as well-dressed as you are, Prosper, but um, hang around home and talk to people and write books and it's cool. I love it understandable well andrew thank you so much for that profound insight and exceptional story um you know everybody has to start somewhere but yours is a story to be reckoned with i mean i'm a um fresh in australia but the first thing i did was you know follow the aussie rules and um you know teams like st kilda richmond they're the underdogs they're not normally winning the um uh, grand final but, you know, those are the kind of teams that you would know if somebody's in there and plays for six to seven years, then they really are passionate about mm. the sport itself. So I can imagine you've got a lot of stories to tell and maybe a lot more books um, than you've put out <laughs> from your days there. So thank you so much um, for that. So all of this was all accidental. Uh, and um, you obviously are somebody that works on, you know, impulse or intuition a lot of people are afraid and there's a lot of fear that goes around with you know um you know stepping outside of your comfort zone first of all before we even get into the whole interview how would you address that um you know to people that are really stuck within their ways and they're afraid to venture out like you did um up until now you know you you've accomplished all of these things and that's a and that's a tough question um, to answer and and that is the biggest problem for most people I mean I work with a lot of people and and the thing that holds them back is their thinking and and wanting to be perfect and worried about what other people are going to think and fear of will it work and can they do it and will it get published and all these other questions are going in their mind you know like I, I call myself an accidental author but but I really believe there are no accidents I, I truly believe there are no accidents in life I I believe that I have been led to this point and I believe my intuition has guided me here and I'm grateful that I have listened to my gut feeling and acted. Whereas most people, this is the problem, most people will get that gut feeling. Like we all know when we shouldn't, shouldn't do something. You know, like if we're doing something that's not aligned with our values, we'll feel that in the pit of our stomach. Uh, but often we, we, we override it. We don't listen to it. Or if we feel like, you know, something's pulling us a certain way and we then start to try and use logic to decide whether that's the right path to go. And often logic's not the right decision. And, you know, I, and I say to people, if logically, if I thought about becoming an author, I would never have done it because it was not logical and it wasn't rational. It was, you know, at the time I was working over 100 hours a week. At the time, you know, I, I'd never even consider writing a book. At the time... Um, you know, I was not a reader, nor a writer, nor any, nothing really pointed in that direction. So why did I do it? Because I didn't want to live with regret um, and because I could have sat there and I could have debated with myself, can I do it? 
Can't I do it? Will it get published? Will it sell? And there's no way I could answer that question without having a go. And what I would say to people that are sitting there, you know, debating, worrying, stuck, you've got nothing to lose. You know, honestly, um, what, what's the worst case scenario? I mean, if you're trying to write a book, what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is you finish a manuscript and that in itself is an incredible achievement. You know, worst case, you self-publish it, you know, and you've still got a book. You've still got something that you can point to. But here, this is what I will say, and this is going to sound unrealistic and it's going to sound a bit over the top, but I believe every single person that makes a decision to write get published and be a successful best-selling author, will do it. Right. Okay? They will do it if they make the decision and if they're willing to stay the race. Most people, the only reason why most people that start in the process to write a book don't get published and successful because they give up along the way. That's the only reason. They might write a, they might write a chapter and go, oh, they read it and reread it and try and perfect it and try and edit it and then they come to the conclusion they're not good enough. My advice is write badly. I don't care, write. I give people permission. Just keep writing, keep writing. It can be crap. Who cares? Just write. Once you've finished, then go back and try and fix it. Right? So finishing manuscript is in everyone's control. Getting it edited is in everyone's control. Getting published. Now, a lot of people don't believe that. They go, oh, yeah, but what if a publisher says no? Well, find another one. What if they say no? Find another one. Well, how many publishers should I send it to until I get published? Well, how important is it to get published? Keep going, keep going, keep going. And the greatest example I use all the time is J.K. Rowling with Harry Potter. She was rejected 40 times. 40 publishers said no to Harry Potter. 40 publishers are now going, what did we do? They got it horribly, horribly wrong. And so the only decision that... A, if you're sitting there listening to this and going, yeah, I'm going to write a book, the only decision you need to make is that I will keep going and do whatever it takes until I'm holding that published book in my hand and it is making me money. There's nothing else that will stop you other than yourself. And you've just got to try and let go of the fear and go, okay, what if I just, what's the worst case scenario? Why don't I just take the first step, give it a go? The outcome, I can guarantee you, is so, so, so worth it. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for that. So it really dwells a lot around self-awareness and a lot of, um, you know, personal development then because you did mention, you know, you, you have to viscerally believe that you can do it. You have to have this undying belief within yourself that you are capable of um, achieving this. Now, could you just walk us through so that we have an understanding of what it really, really takes to be an author. Okay. Well, first, the first thing, Prosper, is I don't think I believe that I could do it, right? I just didn't know that I couldn't, okay? And that's enough to get started. You just, what, the first thing I would, I would ask you, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I can do it, I want to know what evidence have you got to prove that you can't write a book? I mean, everyone can write, yeah? We can all write. I mean, this is my, here's my thinking. This is me. Footballer's brain, right? Keep it simple. On the first question I thought was, how can I write a book? Well, the first thing I said to myself was, well, I can talk and people understand what I'm saying. Therefore, if I can talk words out of my mouth, then I can put those same words onto a piece of paper. Okay? So I can do that. Then, then if I've got a message and I know what I'm saying, then I can put enough words on a piece of paper. And if I keep going and don't stop and never give up, eventually I'll have a published, I'll have a manuscript. Right? I mean, to me, this is just logic. This is not, this is not, I'm not talking about quality. I'm not talking about anything. I'm just saying physically we can write. Physically we can choose to continue. Physically we can have a finished manuscript. The next step, you know, getting it edited. I've always, you know, joked, you know, how does the footballer become a best selling author? And the, the answer to that is get a really good editor. You know, so you, someone will, will help you with that. You know, you don't have to be perfect. Someone will help you perfect it. Um, and then finding a publisher. And, you know, I, um, you know, again, it's a decision. So what does it take? All right, so here's what it takes. Step one is know why. And I think that's, um, that's the same with anything that we, that we try and do. Step one is you need to know why you want to write the book, what it can do for you. What You know, if you're in business, do you want it to um, increase your... Uh, exposure 
be a marketing tool? Do you want it to um, diversify your income? Do you want it to open up other doors so you can get on stages or you can do a whole lot of things? Do you want it, do you want it to um, create an income that maybe enable you to get out of a full-time job? Oh, I know lots of people that have done that. Do you want it to make a difference? Do you want to leave a legacy? Do you want to inspire and be an example for your family? Oh, oh, you've got to work out why. Number one is why. Number two is the belief thing. Um, and as I said, you don't necessarily have to believe that you can do it. You just need to not know that you can't. Um, and, and that just means working on some of the... If you think logically about some of the things that are holding you back, like I don't have enough time, which is a big one for a lot of people, well, if anyone out there is working more than 100 hours a week, you can use that excuse, otherwise that one's gone. Um, you know, it's not about finding more time, it's about reprioritising. The time's there, you just got to use it. Um, you know, is it about I don't think I'm good enough? Well, write it and find out. Um, you know, is it, you know, you're worried about what other people are going to say about it? Well, again, you don't know until you've written it and find out what other people are going to say about it. So whatever the, the belief issue is, you need to deal with that, okay? And there's obviously, we can't go into that. It's not enough time to do that today. But but I certainly spend a lot of time with people on, you know, the, the foundational stuff, and that is primarily the focus, the vision, and the belief. So our third step is to, is to plan out a book, plan it properly. Do a good outline for it because if you don't, you end up writing in circles, and that's what happens to a lot of people. They just start writing, and we'll see where it goes. Well, it's like heading off in your car without knowing where you're going. You'll end up driving around in circles and end up home going, "Well, that was a waste of my time." Well, you need a plan. You need to know exactly what you want the book to do. You need a good structured outline, and once you've got that, the rest is honestly it's prosper. It's simple. Write every single day. My habit at the moment is 500 words a day. That's it. It takes me 20 minutes a day. That's all I do. So far this year, in 2000, we're in 2017, we're on day 318 of 365. And I have, and I'll tell you, I've currently written um, 166,000 words this year. And people go, wow, that's amazing. No, it's not amazing at all. It's a habit. 500 words a day. Create the habit, a little bit every day, write right right create the habit make it just what you do don't perfect it don't be don't analyze it just write it get it done then you go back and do the editing stuff and now obviously there's more you know there's more subtleties around how do you write you know length of chapters and all that sort of stuff but again that's that's just stuff technicalities that we can i'm more happy to talk to people about if they want to but the act of writing is simple if you just create the right habits. Once you've got a finished manuscript and it's ready to rock, then you just start submitting it to publishers. Now, this is where a lot of people have that, do I go down the publishing path or do I self-publish? Now, I'm going to just say this um, with no disrespect to people that self-publish, um, that self-publishing for most people is a default position because they don't believe a publisher will pick up their book. So they just go, oh, I'll self-publish. Keep in mind that if you self-publish, you do everything. You pay for it, you market it, you distribute it, you've got to do the whole lot. It's costly. And then you've got to create, you've got to then create the, uh, you've got to do everything, which for a lot of people, they just don't have the time, resources, contacts, network uh, to do that. And they end up with boxes of books in their garage, which they never sell, which is a, a, a tragedy. I want to encourage every single person listening to this that you are good enough there's a publisher that will publish your book. If you're willing to follow some rules, write a book a publisher's interested in and persist, you'll find a publisher who will then invest in your book and help you get it out on the global platform. And from that point, you enjoy the ride. You know, it's fun, it's exciting, there's media, there's exposure, there's speaking, there's launches. It's the best thing. But it will take some work, it'll take some focus, but every single person can do it. I believe it in my heart. There's not one person I don't think can become a successful published author because it's a decision. Understandable. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, while I was reading on your website, I had a bit of a mindset shift. Um, and um, it mentioned something along the lines of, it is not actually about the book. Can you just uh, walk us through that, you know, bit of a caveat? Because everybody else, like you were saying, you, you know, we've been prepping them to say, write the book, set it out, make sure it's right, write the 500 chapters. I mean, 500 words, not chapters. <laughs> and make sure it's structured. 500 chapters a day. <laughs> That's a big day. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not about the book at all. But, I mean, then you think about anything. I mean, why, why do you go into business for yourself? Why do you, you know, why do you have a job? You know, it's for a lot of people, yes, it's great to love what you do, but that's not why we do it. You know, we have a job because we need the income to live the lifestyle. Um, we start a business because we want to create, you know, we want to make a difference. We want we want to create um, financial options for, for ourselves and our family. You know, a book is a platform. A book, I call a book, it's the key that unlocks the door to anything you want in your life. It'll unlock the door to more confidence, more self-belief. It unlocks the door to, um, to income diversification. It opens the door to credibility and exposure. It opens the door to... Uh, speaking, media, um, online options, mentoring. Uh, it's it's not, but it's not about the books. The book is just that thing you need to do, get it done. Then all these things open up. So it's a, it's about so many things. It's about good ha- creating good habits. It's about it's about self belief. It's about you know what? I look at myself now, and I'm a very different person. Very different, and and I look back and I track everything back to my life and myself right now. And I can track it back to one decision, one seemingly illogical, irrational decision to write a book. Everything is in my life has changed, including the person I'm now married to. Um, I would never have met her, you know, because if you track it all back, there's that decision which led to this decision, which I did that, which put me in this place where I met this lady who's now my wife. It's everything's changed in my life as a result of writing the book. But it's not about the book. It was about the decision and it was about what that book then represented and then what it allowed me to do. Understandable. Well, if you're watching this show right now, you would appreciate that Andrew's not about keeping secrets. He's passionate about sharing all that he knows, um, you know, so that people can actually achieve the same results that he has mentioned, especially if you're single. You know, this is how he... Get a girl or a boy. Absolutely. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, so obviously people are probably watching this, Andrew, and um, you know, just wondering how they can get to learn a lot more from your expertise and your experience. How can people get a hold of you? Well, um, they go to my, my website, which is andrewjobling.com.au, and jobling's J-O-B-L-I-N-G. So andrewjobling.com.au and you know, they can buy my books there. Um, they can see the stuff I do with helping people become authors. Um, I offer a free 30-minute Skype uh, for anyone who's interested. Just have a chat and, and, you know, find out more about what it would take and how I can help them. Um, you know, my, my email address is andrew at andrewjobbling.com.au and my phone number is on my website. I love people calling me. I've got no problem with that at all. I'm not hiding behind a website or, a, you know, I'm, I'm here because I love helping people. And if anyone's sitting there going, yeah, look, I think I could or I want to or just contact me and let's have a chat. Let's see. Look, because honestly, it's, it's an amazing thing to do. It will change your whole deal. And, uh, and I want to encourage everyone to, to get that book that's inside of them, get it out of them and get it onto paper and get it into people's hands where it can make a difference. Understandable. Well, obviously you would understand that we're all here to live, we're here to learn and here, we're here to contribute. And in the lifetime that we are all living, we have aspirations and we can't learn everything else. We all learn from other people's mistakes and other people's notions of Um, you know, what they've been through. Now, as you've heard, Andrew was um, an aspiring footballer and he went on to start off his own cafe, which didn't do so well, but that was, you know, the gateway to what is now his dream lifestyle of being an author and actually helping other people be, do and have, um, you know, lives that are of a happier existence. Now, obviously, Andrew, would you have any sort of last words for somebody who's just probably sitting on the fence, we're not going to be mentioning any names, but you know, there are people <laughs> that are thinking of putting a book out there, but they're not yet thinking they're ready, um, you know, to, to take the plunge. Is there? Yeah, for sure. Yep. I would say if you're sitting there thinking about it, don't put it off. Stop putting it on the back burner because I'll tell you why. The second you're a published author, life will change forever. Forever. And, and that, sound, again, sounds like a big thing, but it's not. Your, your life will change forever in so many perfect, 
in so many ways. And that's not something you want to put off. You know, I say this to people all the time. They say, oh, well, I'll get back to the book when I've got time or when I've got this project. If you're in business for yourself and you, you're thinking, well, I'll let me get some business first, then I'll write a book. No, no, write the book because you'll get more business as a result of that. You know, if you're looking, I need to make more money. So no, no, write the book and you'll have more income. You'll, so if you're sitting on the fence, jump off. That's my advice. Get off the fence. It's not comfortable. You get the fence post up your backside and it's not comfortable at all. So get, <laughs> get off the back burner because that's hot and it's not comfortable and get into action because it's not as hard as you think it is. It's the most empowering and amazing journey that you'll ever take and the end result is that you'll have a life that you won't even believe. So I want to encourage everyone to Understandable. Get, get going and start writing. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for your time, your story, and eventually your expertise, um, you know, on the show today. And I'm hoping that um, if you're watching this show, you would want to, first of all, subscribe to the channel. And then second of all, follow Andrew so that you too can learn from him. And if you've ever wanted to be an author and have been wondering what it takes, I think Andrew is your guy. Thank you so much, there, Andrew, for your time today. Thanks, Prosper. Thanks, Mike. Bye for now. Thank you.